Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Coleman and I have the great pleasure to speak with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John, John. <laughs> hey, John, good to see you again. Hey, um, John, I'm a big seafood lover. And uh, one of the bywords of... Um, seafood is, is sustainability. Um, you know, th we've talked for decades about overfishing certain species, overfishing certain areas. Um, what's the, the update on sustainable seafood? Su I can't even say it. Sustainability. sustainability. Thank you. Uh, the sustainability issue itself <clears throat> is not only important, but it really, really is being addressed. That's the good news, meaning that fish, uh, those who are in the seafood industry, are determined to find a way to sustain it. And we'll get into how they are doing that. So that is the good news, because at one point, because fish was so abundant, just fish the stuff out. And uh, still to this day, there are those fishermen, just like uh, those who killed off uh, the, the sturgeon in the Caspian Sea. Ah, what the heck, we're making money. Um, just keep doing it until we uh, run out of it. <clears throat> that is very foolhardy. Lobster fishermen were accused of that and, and others. But it wasn't an issue until the last 20 years. Now, there are various reasons for that. A, supply and demand. Guys like Coleman, he likes to eat a lot of fish. Yep. And balanced out by all who don't eat no fish. Okay, And then there's me in the middle who has fish two or three times a week, okay? Um, there are certain species that people like more than others, so those are going to be at a premium. Women tend to order salmon at restaurants almost 99% of the time for reasons that escape me. Uh, so salmon is under severe restriction, except that salmon has long been farmed. But what you get is farmed salmon, which is 90% of the time awful stuff. I won't, I won't eat it once I know how it's farm raised. If salmon is raised, in a net, a big net, in the ocean offshore, and they are eating what they would normally eat. That's okay. That's a pretty good product. But it's not as good as those beauties who are leaping the rapids up in the uh, Pacific Northwest, the coppers and the cohos and so forth. Um, but that is one species that they kind of have down pat. Global warming is an enormous issue. As the waters warm even just a little bit, it changes the whole migration of billions of seafood, uh, of fish, just changes it. They go looking, and this means sharks during certain times of the, of the year uh, coming closer to shore because they've run out of food farther out to shore. Um, so global warming and climate change is a, of a, an enormous uh, importance. And um, since nobody in the world seems to be doing too much about that, this is going to get even worse. Um, it could kill off. I mean, what if it killed? What if raising the temperature by one or two degrees killed off the krill, which so many animals, including whales, eat by the ton every single day? That would be a disaster. Aside from that, we do have supply chain issues. Um, I don't know what, earlier this year, January, February, remember, all the news shows started off with the supply chain issue. Boats off San Diego, boats off New York, boats off New Orleans, not coming in, not depositing. Um, I'm still not sure what that was all about, uh, as was the oil shortage, supposedly, in the 1970s with the cars lined up and at the gas. I still don't know. But <clears throat> after six weeks or so, that news cycle seemed to diminish at best. And uh, I've talked to a number of people that said yeah, it is better. It has loosened up, but it is still tough. We just can't get as much of what we want as we could before. What does that mean? Higher prices. So uh, all of this coalesces with this big demand all over the world. Um, for some very expensive species like tuna, um, and the Japanese buy a lot of tuna, and we buy a lot of tuna from the Pacific, and the Japanese buy enormous amounts of American seafood, our crabs, our lobsters. Um, this has made the prices go up astronomically, and in uh, the Virtual Gourmet, if you go to johnmariani.com, uh, to the Virtual Gourmet, and you look up 
the issue for the week of July 10th, um, I did an interview with the head of King Foods, uh, which is San Diego based. And I mean, they have about, about 22 restaurants around the United States. So they depend upon a lot of seafood and a great deal of it has to be, or all of it has to be a first rate, rate quality because Kings is not going to compromise. And they said, well, at the moment, we don't even have a caviar program because we can't get the real stuff out of, out of the Caspian Sea. So we're not going to sell that Chinese junk. We've got California junk. Um, and they're very serious. So they're, they, for years, have been about sustainability. And sustainability really means taking care of the oceans as they now are. The Mediterranean is very, very polluted. So the reason you cannot find any Branzino sea bass that has not been farm raised is because it's pretty much been fished out of the Mediterranean. Unless you're off the coast of Greece and you catch a real sea bass or, or Sicily, you're not going to get a real sea bass. Um, you can't farm raise huge fish like swordfish, so they're going to be at a premium also. Lobsters wax and wane. Like really, you can have a terrible season for lobsters, and then two years later, they rebound. The pollution of the Chesapeake Bay has made um, crab, uh, jumbo lump crab meat, at a store is now $60 a pound. If you could. Wow. Wow. Fish stores do not even carry bay scallops anymore because they would have to pay $25, $30 a pound to get them uh, as, as, as they can. So you, first, the first thing is save the seas. Okay, we're in the, everybody knows about save the whales, and, and that is uh, there's certain, certain un, um, unconscionable uh, trawling boats out there which will still kill whales and uh, too many fish. Uh, the Chilean sea bass was almost fished out the um, uh, blackfish only because of the black and red fish. The grouper, which was once a trash fish, was literally fished out and banned by the federal government. You couldn't fish it anymore commercially. Um, so the seas have to come back. The sea, we have to treat the seas with delicacy. The coral, I mean, coral is disappearing from the face of the earth. This is where fish live. This is where they nestle. This is where they hide. Um, the other thing is that fish farming is growing at an astounding rate. And that is good, except for the fact that in fish farming, as I said, a lot of these fish are eating pellets. These fish are eating what bad dog food is or bad cat food is. Stuffed full of this, stuffed full of that. They put in some vitamins, they put in uh, the waste products, and the fish eat it and they grow and you got a fish. But um, it, that's, it, it's really terrible. And then, then there are some fish farms which will, and King will only buy from these kinds of, of uh, farms, where they know what those animals are being fed. And it has to be as close to the natural diet as possible, because that's what makes any individual species of animal taste the way it does. Of course. Venison mm -hmm. tastes the way it does because it lives on the food in Scotland. Maryland crabs live off the food in the Maryland Chesapeake Bay, which is why it tastes the way it does. Yep. Well, uh, I, I have to say that a lot of people uh, know that I'm, uh, if you want to call it vegan, I'm a sort of a more of a live plant uh, kind of guy for my dieting. And the reason is for me is health reasons, because particularly fish, and I love probably the, the fish that I loved the most was uh, swordfish, which when I was growing up, my mom used to buy because it was maybe once a week because it was inexpensive uh, back in the day. Today, uh, a good swordfish would be quite expensive. But I, I can, I'm concerned about the things like uh, uh, mercury uh, and all the heavy metals, probably from all the ships that have sunk and all of the waste that's been dumped into the ocean. And at some point, it's gotten to the point where I guess it just gets into uh, the fish uh, and causes those problems. But uh, I, will uh, I do want to give a shout out to Kings. Uh, we have one in the uh, Southern California area where we are, not we're north of San Diego. And probably was, while I was still eating uh, fish and oyster and things like that, one of my favorite restaurants, because you always could go in there and feel that you were getting quality product. And whether or not, you know, it was, uh, farm raised or what have you, uh, 
But you know, things have changed. Uh, so where do you see the world going, John, uh, as far as uh, getting uh, decent uh, uh, fish and, and other products uh, that people can have some confidence in that they're going to get something that tastes good and is relatively healthy? I am hopeful, cautiously hopeful, because unless climate changes, unless we do the right uh, climate, it's only going to get worse. The demand for seafood is only going to get higher. I'm hopeful because of the fish farming. Um, I'm hopeful that if you can, can clean up the Chesapeake and stop oil from being put into the Gulf of Mexico and off the coast of California, things will get better. Um, you know, the federal government will not allow you to sell game fish that you catch even yourself in a restaurant. Now, that's because not because the waters may be polluted, which like the Hudson River was a long time ago. We're trying to clean that up here. But that there are bacteria in fish in the most pristine streams in Oregon uh, and the Pacific Northwest or anywhere in Montana, that those bacteria are harmful to human beings. So if you see a game fish, including trout or a lake bass on a menu, that's coming from a farm by law. Same goes for game, uh, rabbit, uh, venison, and so forth, um, unless you get it from Scotland, because that's where it is actually inspected by game inspectors to be fine. Well, I, for me, all I can say is I'm not going to stop eating seafood of all kinds of varieties, and I do trust a good restaurant. I mean, you know, a, a, a good fish market, which are harder and harder to find, or a good restaurant like King's, uh, there's there's plenty of them out there that you can trust. So well, I, want, I should make one last point about freezing. Uh, Ninety nine percent of all the shrimp you'll ever eat is frozen. Not a bad thing, but it doesn't taste anything like what you get off the coast of Carolina when it's fresh. I mean, nothing. It's just sweet. Uh, but flash freezing, the industry will tell you, flash freezing is much much better. You think, oh. You take it solid like that, that's going to detect the tissue. No, it keeps the tissue from breaking down. When you freeze something, it takes a while to freeze. Then you got to unthaw it and stuff, and the bacteria will come. You know, flash freezing, just like suspended animation. That fish comes out much better. Almost all the sushi you will eat that comes out of uh, Japan and the great Japan uh, seafood markets is all flash frozen on board. Mm, good to know. Good to know. John, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Good fishing. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.